I appreciate you guys making your way back to the Independent Investor Channel. I, I may uncover a new leaf, a mission going forward, and just start rolling out awareness videos on highly on every stinking day. It's awesome because for the retail investor, I'm like the voice of reason that can come on and be like, boom, I have a message for the short sellers. There it is. You want to place it in your thread? You want to place it in your Reddit thread? Go ahead. Short sellers, extremely predictable every single day, right? Sells off the second the market opens up at 930 Eastern Standard Time, right? Stock dives down, then it recovers for the rest of the day, okay? Now, what this does is it makes sure that the SEC does not provide a, a scrutiny on this game that's being played. And you know what's amazing is nowadays with the power of technology and YouTube, guys like myself who don't really care, like if you don't like my message, you can leave and go somewhere else. And this really isn't about the, the money or the stock ownership and highly on. What this is about is a phenomenal company that's not being given its due uh, attention. And the unfortunate part about what's going on right now is that it's being manipulated to the downside. There it is. There's my message for you, honestly. That's for all the short sellers in the world right there. You see that? See that? That's that's on behalf of all of the retail community out there that's going to hold this stock until the end. There it is. Okay? Now, once we start to drive this down to where they're satisfied or the short selling is exhausted, that'll be lovely. But you know what would be even more lovely? is if we had some sort of breakthrough on this earnings coming up, that would be absolutely lovely. And there would be some vindication. There would be some validation behind what these folks are doing. It, it seems as if the more that you can lie and manipulate and put on a dress and a clown suit and dance around and parade your stock out there, the more nod you get from this imperfect stock market. Let's make no doubt about it. Furthermore, value investing, okay? If you've got advocates in DC to somehow hold your stock together and hold the funds flowing, whether it be into healthcare or whether it be in industry, you're seemingly okay. And that's part of the gig, okay? Here's the thing. I own Johnson & Johnson, Microsoft, all right? I've got a half a million dollars put away in my portfolio. I'm fine. I'm not going to starve to death. Here's the thing. Retail investors have a real opportunity here to do due diligence, that of which all of the information was provided on sec.gov. Most of the information you can provide, some of it's been removed as Hylion has uh, improved their website vastly. So you can go on there and you can identify all of the amazing things that they're doing with the Innovation Council. But a couple points I wanna make in this uh, video, really it was just an ability to put some content out there uh, that is shareable with my message right there because that's really all you can say. That's really all you can say and that's actually how I can feel. And, and this sums it up right perfectly for everybody, doesn't it? It feels good, it feels good because what's going on right now is absolutely incorrect, okay? And I actually think the head guy has got it wrong right now with regard to faster charging stations, okay? If I wanted to make my coffee in three seconds as opposed to two minutes, it would take an extreme amount of power to make that coffee in three seconds as opposed to just waiting a little bit for two minutes. Unfortunately, this is the world and the reality that the EV community lives in, in that they live in this fairy tale world in that they can just pull up to a charging station and they're gonna have a hunky dory time there at the charging station, just pulling right up into their open slot. Tell me, when was the last time you went to the gas station and had an open fuel tank to go to, right? It's a good feeling. Hey, I got an open pump here. This is awesome. I don't have to wait, right? How do you feel when you pull in and the gas station's full, right? It's like, this sucks, man. This is like two minutes. I'm never gonna get back right out of my life and you're waiting and you're waiting and the person in front of you is talking on their cell phone right the, their car is already already pumped or they leave it and they go into the store that really pisses me off that's another good one how do you feel when they do that okay i think a lot of people are reconsidering their ev uh, understanding and 
I think from a couple different perspectives, we want to put uh, higher charging EV stations out there right now. Think of how much pull off the grid that's going to cost. That electricity costs money, okay? And the question is, how much money are we spending? How much money are we spending, okay? This government doesn't seem to care about how much money we spend on anything. It doesn't matter if it's a good idea or not, right? Let's just spend money, spend money. And the problem with charging stations is that it takes too long, right? So the solution is just to throw money at it and make quicker charging stations. This is lovely. This is going to solve the entire problem, okay? No acknowledgement whatsoever to the power that it's going to take to power this non-existent grid. It doesn't exist, especially doesn't exist in the class eight uh, trucking space, that of which Hylion is fighting its way forward, working with top industry leaders right now to bring forward a solution that's absolutely going to work. It can work right now, right now, not not in the future, not, hey, we need to build out infrastructure. It can work right now. Our goods need to ship from point A to point B. It can happen right now, right now. One in five, one in five people who have purchased EV vehicles are reconsidering their purchase and they're going back to gas. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Think about it. I have zero inkling to go buy an electric vehicle, zero. I drive a Toyota Tacoma. It's incredible. And if you'd like to race me up in the snow, I can throw my deal into four wheel deal. And I don't know what the hell you think you're going to do in the snow when you go snowboarding with me. But I, people don't think about the true application, right? I talk to people all the time that are big mammals. Okay, they're big, they're bigger people, they're big. Right. And they're like, you know, Ryan, even the Tacoma is a little bit small for me. I'm going to opt for the Tundra or the Dodge Ram or the Silverado or the Ford F-150. Right. Just because it's spacious. And one thing that Americans are proud of is we like our space. Like if we overeat and we're a big mammal and we're over 200 pounds, which is more than the average size of the average bear, uh, the average mammal in the world. OK, over 200 pounds. We like our space. OK. And, and it's, I find it interesting how everybody's talking about this EV revolution, and we're looking at these trucks. Tell me, honestly, truck drivers, are you honestly excited about getting into a full electric vehicle? They look really, really manly. They really do. Seriously. If I showed you a picture of an electric vehicle, would you be excited about trading in your international for this? Would you be excited about trading in your Volvo or your Peterbilt? I think not. Wake up. Smell the coffee, right? Wait two minutes to smell the coffee because I don't need my coffee made in three seconds. I don't. Because my utility bill is going to be $300 a month to have my coffee in three seconds because I don't have the patience to wait. All right? Now, the Innovation Council is huge. I will absolutely become a drinker of Budweiser if they can actually make industry understand that Hylion has the technology to power the vehicles from point A to point B. This is what they do. This is what they do. And if you're willing to use existing infrastructure and existing fueling stations, then it's right there, ready to go, okay? Now, it can't happen soon enough. Because although Hylion is a fantastic idea, we're not going to have a stock anymore if this continues, right? Thanks to the short sellers and thanks to the weak hands, the paper hands, right? All these retail investors that think they're just going to hold this stock to the moon, they'll sell out too. Yes, you will sell out too, okay? Now, I'm trying to advocate for understanding what it is that you hold here. Okay, the big institutions, they understand what it is that you hold. They understand it. That's why the stock is being bought right now and it's being manipulated to the downside. Okay, I saw one very smart comment to the thread that I cover. It says that the very people that are driving the stock down will be the very same people that actually short squeeze it on the upside. All right, this is stock market investing, and unfortunately, it is imperfect. And right now, 
the disconnect between Hylion's company and what they're doing, what they're innovating, what they're trying to realistically put on the road is absolutely, completely, 100% disconnected from what's going on with the stock. The potential of this company is enormous. Stock price doesn't reflect it now. What does that mean for retail investors? A couple things on the investment side here I want to bring your attention to. If you think the stock's going low, think about some put contracts, pick it up, write some 850 contracts, write some $9 contracts. If that's what you want to do. Consider some long call options. I've just bought eight contracts or so, 3000 bucks, right? Long calls, 12 and a half strike. That means in the next two years, if Hylion just so happens to be let go by the short sellers and the stock actually gets up to where I think it will, at least north of 1250, then I should be good, okay? My break even is right around 17, no problem. I think the stock in two, three years is gonna be 100 plus anyway, right? And those are gonna be some very, very valuable contracts. But if you're skittish about the opportunity for retail investors, that of which is my only concern, all right? I could care less about the institutions. I could care less about the short sellers. And I think hedge funds are just about as close to hell as you can possibly get. I am an advocate for the retail investors and incredible freedom of speech. Fantastic for me to come on and advocate for that very thing. There's money here to be made as long as it's done in a way that is, um, it's, it's done in a way that makes sense for you. I want you to understand that there's multiple ways of making money here, okay? I've already touched on the dishonest piece, Nicola Hylion, right? Thomas Healy's done everything he can possibly do. I don't want to see Thomas Healy on social media every day, dancing around, talking about his company. If you want to know about Hylion, go to Hylion.com, search out all the articles that have been listed, go to the sec.gov. Um, the information there is fascinating, fascinating. Go back to some of the original documents. Goldman Sachs is in there. They're in the original documents. That's why I don't really understand their whole like, I'm going to downgrade the stock and then I'm going to buy the stock four days later, right? I, I just don't get it. It's immoral and, and it's quite frankly stock manipulation. And there seems to be two different worlds here, the retail investors and the institutional investors. And we are at war, okay? If you want to get involved in the war, by all means, share the video, let them know. H-Y-L-N is the ticker symbol. Go ahead, take a look at it. It's interesting enough of a company just to educate yourself up on what those options are, okay? For me, I like to understand what my options are, okay? Do I want Chinese? Do I want Mexican food? Uh, do I want Chipotle? Do I want a Cracker Barrel, right? I, I need to understand my options. I like Chick-fil-A, right? Options are good, okay? But this whole idea that we have to go EV or break, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. There's going to be a place for EV, there's always going to be a, a, a place for that. And I think Tesla should stay in their wheelhouse. That's what I think. Because honestly, the rhetorical question that I have for truck drivers, are they going to be excited? Hey, fleet owners, try to tell your uh, fleet truck drivers that they're going to be going all EV in that stupid look looking little toy of an EV truck out there that's being proposed in all seriousness by Tesla. I think all people are, they're serious when they look at how idiotic these trucks look. They're, they're stupid looking. There's no truck driver I've ever known in this life that is gonna drive one of those and be excited about it. I would feel like less of a man. I would feel like less of a man. And what am I going to do? I'm going to pull my little dinky electric truck over after my 450 mile range. And I'm going to wait in line because there's not one person in front of me. There's six people in front of me. And this, this fast charging stuff is really interesting too. How fast do you realistically think that you can charge a, a semi truck fully electric, right? Are, are you going to be yelling and screaming at the person in front of you to get out of the way? You've got six people in front of you. What are you going to do? Can you imagine all the fights at the freaking electric charging station for these class eight trucks? This is going to be awesome. Film it. Put it on Netflix. That I will buy. All right. Fantastic stuff. Hylion has no debt. Seemingly companies nowadays that we invest in have so much debt. There's no real promise that they'll ever pay off their debt ever. So carrying fat loads of institutional debt seems to be the norm now. 
I make a truckload of money off of AT&T. They, they, they owe more money than the entire country of Australia. It's fantastic. Yeah. So if you want to invest, make sure and look for those companies that have massive debt loads that'll never be paid off in the next three or 400 years, and you'll make money with them. But companies like Hylion, this will be overlooked until the sun goes down. I'm, I'm telling you. It's never acknowledged when a company tries to be fiscally responsible and do the right thing and actually scale up the business with some level of responsibility, some level of fiscal stewardship. What the hell is that? Not in this country. Get out of here with that type of stuff. The solution here is very, very simple to retail investors, and then I'll close down the video. If you own shares, hold them. Very simple, okay? They cannot take shares that you do not sell, okay? They can't. It's that simple. And remember why you bought the company, okay? Remember the sales projections that I so elegantly review. I could take each and every slide out of the investor presentation and make an entire YouTube video about it every single day. And quite frankly, I'm almost getting to the end of my rope where this little thing right here is just about the only power that the retail investors have our voice. Yep, our voice and our action. Put your dollars to work. I don't care if it's a 100 shares or a 1000 shares. Hold them. Don't let them go. Because this right here is going to be a movement, a revolution in the retail investing community that's going to generate wealth and it's going to generate wealth unlike any value company you've ever seen in our lifetime. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. I want to make sure and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video and share the message with anybody out there. Share it with the thread groups if that's what you want. I'm sure it's be, be really interesting me putting up my powerful finger to the short sellers. Absolutely. But that's all we can do. That's all we can do. Stick together, be strong, continue to monitor and keep our ears to the grindstone as far as new breaking news and uh, involved in uh, developments in the company as they roll out over time here. This earnings is going to be critical this time, guys. We need to start earning some sales here. The sales team needs to really start going like their life depends on it. It really does. Because if you haven't figured it out yet, we are at war. We are at war. Let's make it happen. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into the message. And good luck in your investment future.